Hello, my name is Paul Miners and welcome to another one of my Asana training videos. In this video, I want to give you some ideas of what to put in an Asana. I find that's one of the common questions I get when people are starting with Asana is, what exactly do you put in put into this tool? And I think there are some misconceptions out there. People think this is just a project management tool and they think, oh, if I'm not managing big projects, it's not really for me. Actually, the great thing about something like Asana is that it's very versatile. You can use it in a very simple, straightforward way for simple tasks and to-dos and things you need to do, but it can really scale and grow with you. So it can be turned into a more of a project management tool. You can use things like the timeline to plan bigger projects as well, but it's up to you to decide to what extent you want to use Asana. So I'm going to discuss some common use cases of using Asana in this video and give you some examples to think about. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to get notified about new videos that I release. And if you want one-on-one -on -one help with Asana, setting up your account, working out the best way to use it, training your team, have a look in the link below in the description to learn about my consulting service, including joining my new Master Asana online course and coaching program. All right, let's get into this video. So let's start with just simple tasks. If you need like just an easy way to be able to put tasks that you're doing into Asana, you can create a project a bit like this one here. I've just created one that's fairly generic called admin and accounting. This is just a demo account, by the way. And so what I've done is I've got different sections here for like office admin, uh, accounts receivable and payable, miscellaneous st um, tasks to do with taxes and human resources. So really, I've just broken the project up into different kind of subcategories, really. And so for things like, you know, um, a monthly report that I need to do, I can just have a random task in, in this uh, taxes section here. Or, you know, I need to set up the, a new payroll system. I can have a task in this human resources section. So this is kind of a project that I call like an evergreen project. It's just kind of an, a place where we can put miscellaneous tasks that we can think of. These aren't really tasks to do with an actual project. They're just day-to-day -day things that we need to do, really. Uh, another use case for something along the, the similar lines is uh, for things like invoicing. So I have seen clients do something like this, where they have invoices in Asana, and they've got things like maybe the invoice amount, um, and they have statuses for whether the invoice has been paid or not. Maybe you even maybe want to create like an approval process. So I've actually got some approval tasks here for tracking whether the invoice has been approved or not. So that's uh, for things like accounting tasks, getting invoices receivable or payable approved and paid you could have things like that live in asana and the nice thing about that is that if you ever have a dispute around a payment you can kind of look back at the task and you can go yep yeah, it was approved and you might look at the comments and see the discussion that took place about that particular invoice so that's kind of like small tasks uh, things like accounting can go into a project like this um, you might want to use Asana for the actual projects that you're working on as well. So depending obviously on what you do, um, I've got like an actual project here called a new product launch. So I'm launching a new product. I've got my sections as kind of the different phases of the product launch. So I've got a phase for planning, production and launch. And so this is what I would refer to more as like an actual project where you know, we're working towards an, a certain goal or outcome. Uh, the project kind of has a finite timeline. It's going to come to an end when this product, uh, when this product is launched. And in this project, I might use more of the features that Asana has to offer, like the timeline here. Um, you know, in these actual projects, I'm more likely to use these features. The dependencies, you can see I'm using milestones in here as well. So that's when you're sort of, you want to go beyond just simple task management and you want to manage an actual project. Um, you can store those kind of bigger projects here in Asana. So examples of projects like this would be, you know, product launches, marketing campaigns, uh, events that you need to plan or manage, or clients, that's a big one. Um, a lot of clients that come to me are, you know, professional service type businesses like lawyers, financial planners, property managers, and they want to know how do you manage, how do I manage my properties in Asana, or how do I manage all my legal clients? And so you could have a project, potentially, this is one way to do it, but a project for each client that you are working with. That's the perfect kind of thing to live here in Asana. Another use for Asana is things like uh, different workflows or um, kind of process type projects where things like design requests, for example, or another example would be things like support tickets. I've seen 
both use cases in Asana. So where we kind of need to follow a request like a like this logo request here, we need to follow it through various stages of development. But the same could be true of maybe like a support ticket. Maybe it's a customer support ticket and we want to track who's managing that and that type of thing. So here's like a new logo design. If I'm the designer who's managing this project, you know, I can move it into my different sections based on the status that that, that ticket is at. I can click on this. I can have conversations in here with the person that submitted the request and I can ask about their requirements. Um, I can change my statuses. I can update due dates. So for things like, yeah, design requests, maybe bug bug tickets, like if you run, uh, manage like a software product or a website, you know, bug reporting, um, support requests, design requests, any kind of kind of like request type project where you're moving something through stages, those type of workflows, I think, lend themselves really well to Asana as well. Along uh, similar lines to what I just said is maybe having like a sales CRM project. So maybe you want to track inbound inquiries to your business, like new leads, prospects, and people you're trying to sell to. So you could have a board with stages like, you know, new lead, you could have contact made, meeting booked, needs to find, and you know, I don't know, negotiation, something like that. And so a new lead gets in touch. We could have um, we could have uh, John Smith in here. Oh no, I'm gonna. The task is John Smith. There we go. So I could have John Smith as a new lead. And uh, using the premium features of Asana, I could even add fields in here. So I could have a field for maybe like lead value, and I could make that a number uh, U.S. dollar. And then I could say, right, this is a ten thousand dollar opportunity. And so I can track kind of deal values or, or client values in here as well. So that could be another use of Asana is actually tracking using it as basically like a sales CRM. A couple of other examples. I've got a project here. This is like an employee list. Um, and so what I've done, it's basically kind of using Asana as a bit of a database, really. So each task is an employee. So these aren't really tasks that I will ever complete. It's kind of just using Asana as a spreadsheet in a way. And I've got poor miners. I've got their birthday, their department, salary, emergency contact. So I'm really taking advantage of the list view and the custom fields here to kind of just list all my employees and have kind of a central centralized place for that kind of information I want to quickly access. And then another uh, another example is goal planning. Um, I've done videos about goal planning in the past, but again, very popular use case of Asana is laying out things like your Q1, Q2 goals. Um, I've linked these to various projects as well, so I can see how this revenue target is linked to this admin project or this accounting project. This product launch goal is related to this product launch project. And so, um, yeah, great use of Asana is uh, tying together, you know, the big picture, the big vision of your business. Uh, so I've got my goals here for the quarter, and I want to break that down into the, you know, the actual projects that I'm doing. So Asana can be used both at the granular level for what your staff and your team are working on, but management and an executive level, you might be using it more at this higher level for things like goal planning and more strategic planning as well. So to sum up this video, as you can see, Asana can be used in so many different ways. Uh, granular, high level, it can be used for miscellaneous tasks, actual projects. So my big piece of advice to you, at take, uh, my big takeaway at the end of this video would be don't limit yourself to what you think Asana can do. A lot of people come to me and they say it's only project management. Actually, no, it can be used for many, many different types of use case. So don't go into Asana with a preconception of what should or shouldn't go in there or, or, or how to use it specifically. I think have fun with it. Um, I would encourage you to explore different ways of using it. It's a really versatile tool. Um, obviously, you need to kind of work within its boundaries, within its limitations. There are certain things that Rasana is not good at. Maybe my goal planning would be better in a spreadsheet. But have some fun with it. Have a little bit of a play, and I think you'll find um, to what extent you want to use Asana and uh, what works well for you. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment below, and I will see you in the next video.